Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian, G0VGS. Today's video is UK specific, but those of you outside the UK might find it useful uh, to see just the kinds of things that we need to do in the UK in order to run things like repeaters, for example. I hope you find it useful. In the UK, in order for us to allow other people to use our station, we have to have a notice of variation. The type of notice of variation you can have will depend on your license class. What I'm going to try and do in this video is show you the types of notice of variation you can have depending on the class of license you hold and the call signs that are associated with them. And there might be more than you think. So let's have a look at the types of call sign you can hold. First one, the obvious one, is repeaters. You can also have a radio frequency link for a repeater in order to get internet to a remote site that doesn't have internet on it. There are simplex gateways. There are packet radio mailboxes and nodes which allow access further afield to the packet radio mailbox. APRS I gates. APRS digipeters. And pagers. So let's have a look at them individually. Repeaters come in two flavours, either analog or digital. Analog repeaters start GB3 and digital repeaters start GB7. Repeater RF links have the same call sign as the repeater with an SSID of minus L. So, for example, GB3XX might have a repeater RF link of GB3XX minus L. You can replace the X's at the end of the call sign with the letters of your choice, as long as they're not already in use. Repeaters can be kept by full licensees only. Simplex gateways are a little different. They come in two flavours, unattended and attended. Unattended includes gateways on 2 metres, 6 metres, and 10 meters. These are all bands where we are the primary user. Analog simplex gateways are MB7I and digital are MB6 with suffixes of your choice. Attended gateways are on 70 centimeters and 4 meters, and these are bands where we are secondary. Analog Gateways are MB7A and digital MB6I. Again, you can replace the X's with letters of your choice, as long as obviously they're not already in use. Gateways can be kept by both intermediate and full licensees. The times of operation on your NOV for a simplex gateway are a minimum level of service. So for example, on an attended gateway, your NOV may state that you need to operate eight hours a day, five days a week. That is a minimum. And the idea behind that is to make sure that people don't apply for a gateway and hold up a call sign when actually they never use it. Packet radio mailboxes include bulletin boards or DX clusters. And they all start GB7 and have three letters. Nodes are MB7N with two letters following. You can replace the X again with the letters of your choice as long as they're not already in use elsewhere. And these can be kept by full licensees only. 
APRS is slightly different. There are eye gates, receive only eye gates, and digipeters. Eye gates are MB7U and can be operated by full licensees only. There are also receive only eye gates, and they are MB7R, and any license class can hold this because there's no transmission on radio frequencies. Digipeters are MB7U or MB7V and can be operated by full licensees only. Again, you can replace the X with letters of your choice as long as they're not already in use. There is a slight caveat to this because I gates and receive only I gates share the same suffixes so that people can upgrade with the same letters. So, for example, if you have a receive only I gate of MB7RXX, you would want that to be available when you move to an I gate. So you would then become MB7UXX, but at least you would keep the two letters of your choice. Packet pager systems run on a specific frequency. And all start MB7P and two letters. Again, you can replace the X with letters of your choice as long as they're not already in use. And these can be kept by full licensees only. Well, I hope you found that useful and that it unraveled a few of the mysteries of the notice of variation in the UK. A massive thank you once again to all the subscribers. We're way over the 900 mark now, and I'm just blown away by the amount of people who are subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much. If you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you subscribe to the video, it costs nothing. And if you click the bell, YouTube will inform you every time I release a new video. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio. Thank you.